tonight. Hi everyone, how you doing? Uh, happy Tuesday, it is crochet day. I um, hope everyone's okay and doing all right. So I'm just sewing in some ends very quickly because <laughs> I've just realized I hadn't done them. So um, everybody okay? Hope you all are. Um, we are just about done with all the Hachanda orders. I think the last lot are just being picked up by Hermes today, which is really good. So we had a cracking day yesterday. Got through loads and loads and loads, um, which was really good. Um, for those of you, if you wanted that ruler from Andy from Crafty UK, the one we did yesterday, um, I forgot to tell you what size it was. Um, and somebody asked her, uh, Anne, um, messaged me. So it's the half hex gun and it's the 10 inch one. OK, so um, he's got lots and lots and lots and lots and humongous amount of um, templates. So if you did want to order it, you're looking for the 10 inch half hexagon. OK, um, and uh, yeah, you'll be um, if you contact him, you can do it via Facebook or give him a call. And um, they have got apparently they've got an eBay shop, which I didn't know. But they've got an eBay shop and there's lots of stuff on there, too. So. Um, so, yeah, but if you give him a call that you can do it direct through them. OK, um, so there was that and that. It's a couple of other little things. Who's coming online first? Who's there, groups? We've got Eileen, we've got Sheena, Natalie, uh, Jean, Jenny. Lovely. Um, most people. Fabulous. Lovely, lovely. Hi, everybody. Um, so we're going to do some crochet today. And we're going to make some snowflakes and I've got a couple of little patterns to show you. But there are hundreds and hundreds out there. <laughs> But before we get started, a couple of things I wanted to let you know. We contacted by a lady who lives in Dennis, but she works at Cardiff and Heath Hospital. Um, and they are going to be yarn bombing um, one of the trees in Rookwood Hospital, um, brightening it all up and everything. So they are looking for people to knit or crochet. I'm sorry, I've got it written down, so I remembered. Knit or crochet 20, uh, squares which are 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres. Now, if you've got lots and lots of little tiny bits left over from projects, this might be a really, really nice way of using them up and um, you know doing a bit of yarn bombing, being part of that. Um, you can drop them off to the shop and we'll have a bag and then she can come and pick them up from us. Um, but she want, they want 20 by 20 centimetre squares. They could be knitted or crocheted, doesn't matter. Uh, um, and they also need, for going around like branches and stuff, 100 centimetres so a metre by 15 centimetres so long thin strips um, if anybody's interested in doing that that would be amazing just drop us a message or comment on and if you want to make some um, you know, brilliant way of using up all those random little bits of, of wool if you wanted to um, they've also got people um, making like little animals and stuff that they're going to put in the tree as well and all sorts so yeah it's a really lovely project just brighten up people's days a little bit while they're in hospital um because apparently it's right by the the entrance and you know they're they're gonna yeah they're gonna do something beautiful with it so um so we had that little request yesterday so i said i'd pass that on um also monica from cutting edge who are a group who are in cowbridge um, they're sort of textile sewing quilting type group they do a lot like felting and stuff like that as well um, they've got a little exhibition happening in Ca St. Villa St Hilary Village Hall in Cowbridge and they um, it's 11 to 4 on the 14th and 15th of August okay um, so if you need something to do that weekend and you fancy pootling down if you're local to us uh, you fancy putting over to Cowbridge. They always do some beautiful, beautiful work. Uh, Monica was really heavily involved with the Swansea Festival of Stitch um, the first year that we did it, or maybe the second year. And I know some of our ladies exhibited there, um, and we we did a we did quite a few quilts actually into that. And uh, yeah, she did a, a beautiful job of exhibiting. So that might be something to worth worth going in and having a little look at as well. I will pop a, a post up with the, all those details. Okay, so um, you can go back and look. So I've got two, so we're going to, because we're doing Christmas in July, you know, we're still doing Christmas in July all this week. Um, I've got some nice little crocheted snowflake patterns for you. There are hundreds out there on um, Pinterest. These, um, one is mine and which I'll put the pattern on. Um, one is adapted from a really old, uh, actually from a doily pattern that I had. And it just, the fact that the centre looked like a snowflake, I've kind of used that as well. So I will put the patterns up online for these, okay? Um, usual two quid, same as all the other like isolation blocks and stuff. So um, I don't know if you can see these groups. So what I've got is I've got a large snowflake like this and I've got a little tiny one as well. 
okay and these haven't been blocked yet because I'm going to show you how to block them so they would look you can see if you hang them they do go quite floppy all right so the way you can stop that and we'll, I'll block them I'm not going to put the PVA on them because um, I, <laughs> you kind of need to I, a, I didn't have any PVA in the house so I've got to pick any up from the shop <laughs> um, but also I um, I don't need any more of these I've got lots of these but I did make a lot they're all in the attic um, I used them on the tree as well and also we did a whole um, shop window display a couple of Christmases again ago where lots and lots of people made them for us all different snowflakes and we PVA'd them and everything and blocked them so they stayed sort of stiff and we've had hundreds of snowflakes crocheted snowflakes in the window it looked really really pretty it was so sweet um, so there's a little tiny diddy one which will take you no time at all okay now this one does need blocking to kind of get the shape okay a little tiny one that needs no time at all and then a slightly bigger one and I'm hoping we're gonna have time to do them both okay because they are really quick really really mega quick so Who's there? Any questions? Anything before we get going? Uh, Meg's joined us. Hi, Meggy. Uh, Tina said I've just purchased a half hexagon template from yesterday. Ah, cool. It's why I'm late. Fabulous. Yes, at the moment. Lovely, 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 lovely. Right, so we're going to start with this little mega, mega quick, tiny little snowflake. But I think if you were doing a display of them or something, or hanging them on the tree, sometimes it's nice to have different sizes. Okay, so. Excuse all the bits of thread. I was so into silly late last night and I just realised I haven't washed the mat down. It really does need a clean. Um, right, hang on. I'm going to take this necklace off because it's hitting the, the table and making a hell of a noise. <laughs> there we go. We're going to start with a magic ring. Okay, so grooves nice and close for me. So you've got your tail over the front like this. Flip over so I've got a cross. Open my fingers and pick up that trailer, trailing loop. Okay, like that. Slip your fingers out, keep it nice and big. Again, so over, cross, open my fingers out, pick up the working yarn like that. And I always like, as you know, to do a chain just to anchor it. Okay, it means I can take my fingers out and we're going to work into this bit here. All right, so we're going to start by chaining four. So I'm going to go one, two, three and four and that works as a half treble and then two chains okay so it's it's a long chain to start with I'm then going to do a half treble and chain two so wrap in pull up so I've got three on my hook wrap pull through all three so there's my half treble and then chain two one and two okay I'm going to repeat that five times in total so I've done it once and then I want to do another one. Oh, so half treble. Sorry. Groups, can you come this way? Because I'm stretching so far. I'm there we go. Thank you. Sorry, I know that's a pain, but I'm <laughs> as it's was it such a stretch, I couldn't can couldn't control it. There we go. So half treble, two chain, one, two, and then a third time, half treble, and two chain, one, two. Okay, and then a fourth half treble and two chain. There we go. And so one, two, three, that's four, and then a fifth time. Okay, half treble and two. One, two. Okay, so we're then going to pull up the tail. So you're going to grab the tail and pull that in like this. Okay, nice and tight. And then we want to slip stitch in so that chain four that we started with you're going to slip stitch into the second chain up because you want that chain two to, to make, make a little space okay so i'm going to go one two and i'm going to slip stitch into that second chain there like that and you've got like a little piece like that okay can you see that guys the light's funny in here tonight today isn't it mm. hang on let me see if i can move that is that any better you're getting sh better shadows on yeah. less shadows on that okay there we go so there's only one other round on this one and it's repetitive so i'm going to start by i want to slip stitch into this first chain space here 
okay so I'm just going to put my hook into there and slip stitch just to move the yarn over okay like that I'm going to chain three one two and three and then I'm going to slip stitch back into that same chain space okay. and what you've got is like this funny little loop thing now and now I'm going to chain five so one two three four and five like that and slip stitch back in the same space like that a second loop and then chain three one two and three and then slip stitch back in the same space so in that one oh, slip stitch there don't double crochet there we go so into that one chain space i've got these three loops so i've got a chain three loop a chain five loop and a chain three loop into that same one i'm going to slip stitch into my next space like that so slip stitch over and I'm going to repeat that and you're going to repeat that all the way around so it's chain three one two and three and slip stitch and then one two three four and five and slip stitch just move that over a second there we go and then three one two and three and slip stitch in again like that okay and I'm just going to work my way round okay it's, it's really as easy as that and it makes these really pretty little um so I'm going to slip stitch into the next space so anyone there while well, I'm just going working my way around anybody uh having see? a chat lost me as I struggled with the magic ring you don't have to do a magic ring Jen, Jen. you could just chain five and join to make a circle it doesn't have to be a magic ring just make yourself a little little chain of five and then join in i'll show you that on the next one okay because that's not a magic ring on the next one but you could just chain five and then join into the first chain to make a, a little circle and then work into that rather than the the magic ring okay i i like magic rings just because i can pull them up and it means i've got a big circle to work into but if you're if you struggle with them don't worry just just do a chain okay Okay. Anybody else having a chat there? Uh, Linda Tomlinson says I can't. I still can't get the magic ring. Yeah, it does take a little bit of practice, but like I was saying, you don't don't worry about magic rings if you're struggling with them. Unless you're doing toys, um, in which case you really do kind of want to get get used to it because it gives you no hole at all, like at the top of the heads and it there on their you know arms and legs and things. Um, I would, you know persevere with it but if it's you know for something like this just do a chain you know a little chain ring that'll be absolutely fine so you just i'm just repeating that chain three chain five chain three with the slip stitches in between all the way around into every space mega mega quick and easy and they make really cute little i think they'd be beautiful you could um you could put them onto like fishing wire or something you know something transparent in your front room window with all the, you know those tiny tiny little um led lights you know not like big fairy lights the ones that have like they're on a wire and they're the tiny tiny little sparkly ones you could because they don't get hot because they're the tiny little leds you could put some strings of those down in your front room window with lots of these snowflakes it would be look really lovely it'd look like it was snowing you'd actually have a white christmas well you know fake white christmas but it'd be nice um, yeah, I wouldn't use normal fairy lights because they can get a bit warm against the wool and that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> but um, you could absolutely do it with um, those little LED ones. That would be really cute. They'd make, you know, if you know, if you want to use up bits of wool and stuff, how about, you know, if you were gift wrapping at Christmas, I know we're talking a lot about Christmas, but that's all about what this week, this day, you know, week is about. If you were gift wrapping, you could put some like silver ribbon round the thing and bring them up through the loop there and tie a bow and it would just be a really beautiful like little bit of decoration on a present if you've got like a real special present you want to you know give so um one last one and then we're there so i'm going to slip stitch over into that one and one two and three and slip stitch and then five one two three four and five and in and then oh 
a bit more yarn. I'm using just a double knit. You could do these in cotton. You could do them in four ply. Obviously, you know, if you use different, you could do them as super chunky and have massive, you know, snowflakes. You know, just I would just use up. So when I get to my last um, space and I've done my chain three slip stitch, chain five slip stitch, chain three slip stitch, all I'm going to do then is slip stitch into the very first bit there. Oh, come on. There we go. Like that. Okay. And snip my yarn. And pull through. Okay. Like, oh, <laughs> like that. All right. And I've got a little snowflake. Now it does look a little bit misshapen at the moment, but that's because we you'd want to block it. Okay. Now, I would go to um, somewhere like B&M or Home Bargains or Biology, somewhere like that, or even Argos, and get yourself um, those foam mats. Then they're, they're like four or five quid. You can get a pack of foam mats that look like jigsaws and they fit together and they're like for kids to play on, but they're quite thick foam. Um, they are brilliant for blocking any sort of knitting and crocheting because you can pin into them and because they're foam, um, and they're sort of like washable it you know you can so blocking you we do blocking in order to keep things in shape so you want to get it you want to pin it out get it damp so either put a damp tea towel over it and then let it dry completely so you want to leave it for like 24 hours let it completely dry and then take your pins out and what that does is hold everything in shape if you're a knitter you'll know about blocking um, but with these you can do the same but you can do it with PVA glue so you want to do a 50-50 mix. You want to do, so 50% water, 50% PVA glue. And you just mix it all together so you've got like a watery PVA. Pin this out. So like if this was my snowflake, let me just quickly sew in that end out of the way. I'm just using my, my ironing board for now um, because uh, my blocking boards, my <laughs> jigsaw pieces are in, stor in storage. They're up in the attic because I haven't needed to block anything for ages. And we've got so much stuff in the house from the shop and everything got put in the attic so i'm just gonna use my cutting board you could do it on, not if you're gonna use pva glue if you're just gonna use water for um like a, a garment or something um you would you could do you can't do it on the carpet or get yourself um a piece of a pin board you know a cork pin board that really works as well something you can pin onto and you can leave okay so where i want the points to sort of stand out a bit I'm going to pin them in place like this okay like that and remember whatever shape sort of shape you block this into is what it'll stay as okay so and I'm just can you see I'm just pin it out on those top edges like whoop, like that now this is probably not the best thing to block onto but it's got a bit of wadding and it meant that I could I could show you guys how to do it um, but those foam mats are by far the easiest way. So I would pin that out, okay, like this, to make sure that it's the shape that I want it to be, okay? It doesn't want to stay on that bit. Come on, it's because it's not quite the right stuff. The foam or a cork board is better. So I would pin that out. I would then, with my PVA solution, paint, just with a little paintbrush, soak it, absolutely soak it with PVA and, glue, and water, all right? and then leave them leave them to completely dry all right they've got to be completely bone dry once they are dry you can take the pins out and they will stay really stiff and in the shape that you want them to so you can then hang them on the christmas tree you could hang them in the window you could put them on a gift or something you know um if you're gonna say maybe make a baby blanket and you wanted to use these as an applique obviously you wouldn't pva them you would just stitch them in and you would stitch them in to the the points okay so hopefully that was that made sense what i what i'm saying about blocking but what that does is once it blocks it kind of brings it all out into a snowflakey shape okay so you've got little snowflakes that's the little one all right We've got time we'll have a go with the big one as well okay we might not get all the way around but you'll get most of it okay any questions anybody there anybody having a chat uh, Nina Thomas says I use uh, thick 
cake boards. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would work. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, if you're going to use the PVA, you want something that you don't mind getting glue all over. Um, you know, that's that would work no problem at all. Um, but if um, if you're just going to use water, if you would block in a garment or something, you can actually do it on on the carpet. I've seen loads of people do it on the carpet. No. Right. Okay. Second one. We are going to slip stitch to start. Like that. I'm using um, what's this? This is the Stylecraft Wonder Soft white um, double knit yarn, um, but it's got a tiny, tiny. Can you see a tiny little bit of mother of pearl sparkle in it? It's really pretty, and I just thought, well, for snowflakes, it would work really well. So. We are going to, on this one, this isn't a magic ring start, this is a chain start. So Jen and um, Linda, if this, this might work for you rather than a magic ring. We're going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're going to join into that first chain there with a slip stitch. So you're going to insert your hook and pull through and pull all the way through. And then this time you're going to work into that little ring there rather than your magic loop. You're just going to work into there. OK, so chain six and join to make a loop. I want to chain four. So one, two, three, four. And that acts as a treble and one chain. OK, I'm getting my height that way. I then want to put a treble into the ring. OK, so. Let me try that again. So just your standard treble. So wrap in, pull up, through two, through two, like that. And then chain two. Sorry, chain one, not chain two, chain one. Okay. So I'm going to do a treble and then a one chain. And I want, there needs to be 12 in total. So that axe is one, that chain axe is one, and this is two. So this would be three. So a treble, chain one. This is four, treble, chain one, and five, chain one, and I'm just going to keep round, going round until I've got 12 in there. That's six, seven, oh, let me just pull off some yarn, um, and eight, Ooh, come on. And nine. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you, ladies. Nine. Um, let me just, sorry, let me just get round this one. What did I say that was? Is that ten? <laughs> Might be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. So we um, have um, just had Orophil thread in stock. It's all gone onto the website um, under the thread section and it's got its own little section, Orophil. We've also got some in the shop as well if, you, if you're popping in. Um, we've gone with all their like basic starter kit, which um, is all their most popular neutrals. OK, so we have got those now in stock. All right. They are on the website. Um, I know some of you love Orophil. I don't know some of you haven't used it. I know some of you don't necessarily use it because you, you machines don't like it. Um, but I know there's a lot. I mean, I love Orophil thread. I use it a lot. Um, I haven't been able to get any normally because I normally buy it from like barn yarns when I... Uh, go up to a show or something but we've got it in the shop now so that's really cool um i don't have to wait anymore i don't have to send off for it so uh, so yeah it's there in the shop and on the website if you wanted it okay so i think i've done my 12 now so one two three four six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and there's a chain one in between and then i'm going to because i want this was a chain of four to start so i'm gonna go into the third one up and slip stitch okay so you've got a nice little center ring like that and what that bit is is this bit here okay this is the very center of the the snowflake all right so my second round i'm going to chain one to get some height like that and i'm going to do a double crochet into that first chain one space so the space under the chain one so in pull up so i've got two on my hook like that okay so it's just a, a double crochet into the first one and then going to go, what am I going to do now? I've forgotten. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Just to get my head around that. So I'm going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
and then I'm going to double crochet into there. And what these are, these are like foundation chains that you're going to, we're going to be crocheting into to make the, the sort of spirals. So we're going to chain six and then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four and five. And then double crochet into the next one. Like that. So I've got a six and a five and then we're going to do a six. And you're just going to go all the way around going six, five, six, five, six, five. Okay, and then double crochet into there to join it all up. Can you see I'm making, creating these loops? So I have six, a five, a six, and my next one's a five. So one, two, three, four, and five, and into there. And then I'm going to keep going all, my, all the way around. So talk to me, ladies, while I'm doing this. Uh, Catherine Lamsford or a Phil, that will save me a lot of postage. It will, lovely. It will. We've got some in the shop now. <laughs> And then this is a five, one, two, four, and five. We've just got like, um, I think it's eight, ba nine basic colours to start with. Um, it's what they recommended that, that people start with until we you know, know what people want. Uh, oh, I've lost count. One, two, three, four, five, and one more, six, and into there. And I'm just working, as you can see, I'm just working my way round. Go in six, five, six, five, six, five, six. So this is a five now. So one, two, three, four, five. Anybody else having a chance? Mm. What are you all doing today, you girls and girls? You just said I've already checked out the colours you had. <laughs> six. Yeah, they. I mean, we've got actually we've got um, colour charts that they've given us to give away to customers. Um, I think we've only got 20 of them, so it will be first come, first served. But um, there's, I mean, they do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of colours. So we went kind of with what they suggested. I've got where I am now. Six, five, six, five, six, five, six, five, six. This is a five. One, two, three, four, and five. Um, which are like the most popular sellers. Um, so, yeah, um, we've got those in stock. Two, three five and six so this one's a bit tedious to watch I'm afraid but this is like you're, you're you're setting up what you're going to be doing okay so in that last one like that so I've done that right so six five six five six five six five six five six that's it yeah that's right okay so it ends with a six it starts with a six and ends with a six okay you're then going to chain two so one and two and I know this sounds strange, but you're going into that first chain there, you're going to put a treble. But what you're doing is you're setting up the next row doing this. There we go. We're going to put a treble in there like that. OK, so it kind of looks like a loop when it's finished. Right. Round three. So my chain. Um, where's my chain two? Right. Sorry, we've lost now. What have I just done? Oh, no, that's not right. Single crochet in the chain two space. There's no chain two space. Yes, there is. It's there. Don't. No, it's not. I'm lost. Sorry, ladies. I've complete. Have I gone wrong on the pattern? There's that one there, which was to there. It's ages since I've made these, and I pulled the pattern off really quickly, and I was like, right. Um, sorry. Chain two and da da da. Chain two. End with a double crochet in the first chain. No, I know. It's, sorry, just couldn't read my read the pattern there. So this chain two here. So into this space here, okay. You want to single crochet. So you're kind of going back on yourself a weeny bit like this, okay. So you're going to single crochet there, okay. You're then going to chain two, one and two, and then we're going to start working into this first six loop. Okay, I made that I made that way harder than it needed to be. I really did. <laughs> so I'm going to put two double crochets, uh, two trebles, sorry, one, two. Confused myself and I don't know about you guys. Okay, so I've got two in that first six chain space. I'm then going to do a pico. Okay, so what a pico is, is it's like a little sort of bobble, little decorative thing. So we're going to chain four. So one, two three and four and then back in the first chain we're going to slip stitch and what that does it gives you like this little decorative 
bobbly bit. All right. I then want to do a double treble. So I'm going to wrap twice into the same space through two, through two, through two, like that. And then we're going to do another pico, but we're going to do a six chain. So it becomes a bigger pico. OK, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and then slip stitch back into that first one like that okay it looks odd at the moment but i'll show you on the finished one okay another double treble one two in like that and then it's a reverse so we, we started with two trebles so now we're just going to put two trebles to finish so one no we're not sorry ladies oh, another pico I want to chain four pico Oh, good grief, I can't read my own pattern today. <laughs> I keep skipping steps, keep stip skipping bits. There we go. So let me go through that again for you. So in the first chain six space, I did two trebles, one, two, and then I picoed with four. OK, chain four. I did a double treble and I picoed with the chain six. I did a double treble and I picoed with the chain four. Then I'm going to put two trebles in. OK, so one. Are you all as confused as I am now? Sorry, <laughs> really confused myself then. I was swapping between patterns. OK, like that. And what that kind of does is make, I think you can see on here, we're making that little piece there of the snowflake. OK, there. So that's what that bit there is. All right. We're going to chain two. So one and two and this is like a little bridge piece and into the chain five space we're just going to double crochet like that all right so you end up with like sort of looping it all together chain two to get out of that one so one two and then we're going to repeat all of this so this is my next one which is the chain six i'm going to put two trebles so one and two and then a pico four. So one, two, three, four chains and into that one there, into the bottom one and slip stitch through. Then a double treble. So wrap twice in, pull two, two, pull through two, pull through two. And now you want a pico six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And then you want to go into that first stitch and slip stitch. There we go. And now we double treble. Are you right there, groups? Yeah. Are you having to stretch lots? Is it making your arms ache? <laughs> yeah. Like that. And then a pico four. One, two, three, and four. And in like that. Oh, missed. In like that. Okay. And then two trebles to finish this bit. So one and two chain two one two and then double crochet into the next chain five there all right so i'm not going to go all the way around because that just repeats all the way around but can you see now how this snowflake shape is starting so i in i've changed a double crocheted into my chain five there i would repeat all of that into the chain six and into that chain six, and into that chain six, into that chain six, and then join up. And that's literally all there is to that one. You can see how you can see how these are these are on there. So I'm basically going, I'm working up, double crocheting into my chain fives, working up, double crocheting like that to make the um, to make the snowflake. Again, I would block these. Okay, so I would lie it all out because they do get a bit curly they really do because you know it's wool it's not designed to be flat flat and i would pin out all of those picots like this and before i pva'd them okay to make them stand out so if you put a pin in those picots like this can you see i hope you can see how that's working and then i'd put one in the top there and then one into those little ones there any questions there drew just so i'm pinning this one out no, but Jenny says you might want to check your Fitbit. Um, I found out it adds steps when you crochet. Ah, 
does it? <laughs> I need to crochet more then, don't I? <laughs> no, that would be really cheating on the challenge, wouldn't it? <laughs> Even if I've got it on my left heart, because I tend to wear it on my left. Oh, I'll have to check. There we go. So I would just, can you see, I'm just pinning this out and you're very slightly stretching it just to get it, you know, sort of flat. And then I would PVA and water this. Okay, see that one's actually, I just need to move that one over. Sorry, Drew. There we go, I just stretched that one a bit too much. You can kind of see how, how this is going to work like this. And you can really, you can actually, once you sort of block it, you can kind of see the pattern a bit more as well, actually. Can you see how it sort of lay, opens up the laciness? So, yeah, there I will try and post some, like I said, I'll put these two patterns, I'll do them as, as £2 for the, the, the pair of them. I won't charge, you know, because the first one is, oh, there's nothing to that one. Um, but I'll, I'll put the two patterns onto, onto one and um, I'll put them on the website. But if you like doing these, there are literally thousands of patterns out there and that most of them almost all of them are free as well because they're such a quick easy little project there's lots and lots and lots and lots of patterns out there okay so there you go it's looks it'll look a little bit like that when it's finished so i would then pet brush on my pva and water let it completely dry unpin it and you'll get your nice star shape okay your snow, snowflake shape okay any questions or comments or anything there Jenny said, yeah, I had 1,400 steps without moving off the sofa one day. <laughs> I wear it on my left as well, I'm, and I'm right-handed. Oh, okay. Oh, I better check that I've not been cheating on my challenge. Mind you, I, I've done very little crochet the last, this week. It's only literally been, the I made these two little ones, well, one of these little ones earlier just to remind myself. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't think I... Oh, I think something's wrong with my Fitbit because it always says I've only done 200 steps. And I've done way more than that because I've been backwards and forwards to the shop and, and round and about and everything. Oh, no, I forgot to put it on this morning, didn't I? No, I only put it on when I, literally, about five minutes before I came on air. Yeah, got out of the shower, forgot to put it back on. And so I said, where's your Fitbit? I was like, damn it, I forgot. So I'm going to have to do extra, extra tonight now, aren't I? So uh, for my challenge. <laughs> Um, cool, we are back tomorrow if there's no questions or anything there, we're back tomorrow with block of the week um, I will put the cut instructions for it up um, it's a mixture of uh, there's a little tiny bit of foundation piece in but the majority of it is machine, machine piece in it's a bit of a mix of two things um, but I'm really pleased with it actually it's come out really really well I was having a, another play with it last night again trying different colour combinations and things and um, yeah I'm really pleased with it so hopefully you'll like it too um, we're going to do that tomorrow and what else have we got? Have I got anything else to tell you? I don't think so. I think that's everything. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow at one. Hope you're all okay. Stay safe. No, don't stay home. Come see us. <laughs> but stay safe. Take care. Bye.